to mind. When pro wrestling is good, when pro wrestling is great, it's fucking awesome. And um, for me, like, that main event, the stipulation, uh, Bun B, not on the white suit, Swerve with the, you know, literally he has the, the heads on pikes on his gear. Put over how dominant of a champion he's been. The the layout on the story, layout on the match, the the Masawaism of the match, which has always been through and through and dangles and stuff. Um, yeah, man. Um, the, I don't think this is. I think you know. I think the best match of the year is still Osprey and Danielson. Um, and if you want to, if you want to throw Osprey and Takeshita in there and whatever I missed from the G one. Sure, but um, this might have been outside of Osprey and Daniels. This might have been my favorite match of the year. Um, everything was so well done, and we there were definitely complaints that we had, and we it's detailed and go look at go to our YouTube go valid to, ones, to our, valid ones, very valid. Um, and but ultimately, at the end of the day, what we both said. We both expect we I both said, expect a, a classic. James, I said last week we would see one of the greatest matches of all time, and I was sure of it. And, and I and I agree with you, right? And they still delivered exactly that. <laughs> That's fuck. You know, like you know that kind of pressure. Like we, our like, expectations of somebody in the, the match. Wrestling- somebody in the match heard me say this, and it was like, yeah, I, I make you look smart, Rich. Right. Our expectations in debt in. Brian Danielson, one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time, and Swerve Strickland, one of the greatest professional wrestlers of his generation. And they lived up to it in front of fifty thousand in front of over fifty thousand people in a stadium show with a with a build that was that, that was suboptimal. You know how fucking hard that is? You know what kind of pressure that is in for them to pull that off? Oh, and, also, uh, Danielson in the post uh, joint validated everything I pretty much said. It was like, yes, yeah, we're carrying this whole build. Like, that's what I was saying. Stop freaking out. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah. I, I, I just wanted to say, you know, going, uh, Rick, you know, go, go, I have because I have more. So I'm, I'm stop here. So Rich, uh, yeah, you know. yeah. Well, I guess we should just start. At the t- with Danielson and Swerve, like we're we're already kind of you know settling in on it. Yeah, we're basically already the, 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 whatever. If there's some clip for Danielson and Swerve. We've already we've already into it right now. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Brian Danielson is the new AW World Champion. Um, I'll get to him in a moment. Um, but thinking about this, <laughs> man. Um, of course, I do have a title eulogy ready, <clears throat> which seemed to be p- quite popular on Twitter for those that saw it, but. Looking at how Swerve won the championship in April and the people that he went through, and to get that belief in him pretty much from I know this is going to sound, you know, I don't know if people think about it like this, right? But CM Punk's last match in AEW was at this event last year. Yep. There was somebody that was elevated into that position, whether you can know it or not the person that was elevated to replace cm punk was swerve literally from the from the they snapped their fingers last year at aw all out and set up on the pre-show with the um the mogul uh mogul affiliates uh jumping on hangman page in that pre-show battle royal swerve comes out the week after all out and from there, he took off. And, like, you look at where he was at on the card last year, and then you look up to this year, the replacement for CM Punk, and it's going to take, you know, however long it's going to take, was Swerve. That's the new main event guy that they have. He certified forever. He re-signed with AEW a long time. There are numbers out there, you know, for years and dates. I can't say they're accurate. I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to expose everything, but just put it like this. Swerve's around for a long time, and he's factored in quite quite nicely, if you know what I'm saying. So, <laughs> yeah. um, But 
th- I thought this was a masterclass. Um, this was just like a big show main event. It went 25 minutes, which was yeah. like kind of refreshing. And like, yeah, it just made me feel so proud as a pro wrestling fan of seeing just like the work, the care that was that went into the wrestling. Um, I actually, you know, I spoke with Swerve and I, I asked him uh, if there was anything that you know I could tell the audience, uh, pretty much that you know he, that he felt about the match. Um, and and he wanted me like to let you guys know like he honestly felt like he belonged. And a lot of that match was, you know, freestyle from him, like in Danielson. Like this wasn't some, you know, we got a million things planned and stuff like that. A lot of this stuff was, you know, on the fly. Uh, and he actually, you know, he he made Danielson tap him out. Like this is the first submission that Swerve is taking in AW, and you know, that's that's <laughs> that's that's what went down. So, and this this whole thing was. Um, I thought this was this was excellent. Like just yeah, I uh, you know, match of the year candidate easy. Yeah, like over five stars, over five stars easy. Wait I, wait wait yeah. till Dave yeah. breaks the scale. Yeah, Scale's yeah. yeah. Dave, broke. Dave Meltzer is breaking the scale, and you know I don't I stop at five, but it's one of those matches where it's like this is this is one of the greatest matches of all time, and in a year where both Danielson and Swerve both have matches that I think are actually better than this, that's fucking nuts that they had the match that. Like I think they both had better match. I think they both had better matches with Osprey, both of them, right? And w- yet and still, I still think it's my favorite match of the year. I, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. It's nuts. <clears throat> it, um, it, it's a lot, man. Like, and it, it's like you start thinking about like wrestler of the year and stuff like that. Like, I, I, there's three guys that that really stand out, you know, in, in the way that we're looking for. It's like you know these two guys in this main event. And then yep. Osprey, like, yeah. and yeah. they've all like they've run around Robin with each other this summer, essentially, and that's that was yeah. really cool to c- cool to watch. Yeah. Um. So the thing for me when it hit me when he won, Danielson was that <clears throat> you know we were we had obviously we had obvious and clear complaints about the build. However. And, and, and questions of like, you know, what what does he want to do? What is happening? What's going on? Does he want to still be here? And also that it, his stuff off the screen didn't help with the interviews he was doing. But then once he's in the match and he ends up getting, you know, stomped out uh, in front of uh, Bree and his and Birdie and uh, I, forgot his, I forgot their son's name. Um, and someone, someone in the chat tell me uh, they're... Buddy. Buddy, all right, all right. Was that is that after Buddy Wayne? Don't I don't know. know. Anyway, anyway, so um, he's you know he's bleeding, he's stomped out, and then he's uh, he's on his knees, he's getting lit up, and then you see him focus on his family, and he fires up, and it made me, and it flashed me back to the a the vacant AEW World Championship uh, match against. Jericho, the semifinal before he fought Moxley, where Jericho's lighting him up, he's hurting, and then he he sees the 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 belt in the backdrop, and then he just like he it, it hooks him up, and it's like that's just simple pro wrestling, right? Like you see the camera shots of in, in New Japan or, or you know Japanese matches, Japanese pro wrestling matches, title matches where like it's a double down, both people on the floor laying down, and then they cut to that shot of the belt. To symbolize like yeah. they've gone through hell to get to this point and 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 who's gonna you know who's going to you know <clears throat> fight fire up show the biggest most fighting spirit to leave with the for what this is all about the prize and you know eventually he, he lost and he's lost every time he had lost every time actually he's had since then but they get to the point where like he's not in the ring this time fighting for just the belt this time he's in there fighting Literally, because he had this guy uh, saying, "Like, I'm going to leave you a cripple in front of your family," and that's and that's what and that is what breaks him through. Like, I I literally had the rock goosebumps. <laughs> like, cause we I, uh, so I'm watching over at, uh, at Jamie's with with Zach and uh, one of Jamie's uh, fr- uh, former um, roommates from years ago, 
and um, his fiance Francesca, lo- very loving, very nice of them of, of them to have us. Um, she came back, and she's 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 she just watches wrestling because Jamie watches wrestling, but she's not really into it, right? She's detached. That match came on. And it was the same thing when we when, uh, when we I talked about um, Revolution uh, earlier this year when it was Danielson in Kingston when my cousin Caden's watching. Mm-hmm. It's like this fucking guy <laughs> is so special that people that don't watch wrestling don't have the context outside of a, a two three sentences immediately get it. That guy is special. So. If, so for Francesca, Francesca, she's like, oh my God, like they're doing this stuff for the kids or whatever. And, I, and then I explained to her like, well, Daniels is kind of a sicko because like, you know, people really care about him because people lost him for two years in his career. Like he was, he couldn't, people, he retired, he was forced to retirement 2016. He didn't come back in 2018. We didn't know he was going to come back. So whenever he's injured, people, hold, you know, kind of hold him with, with uh, kids gloves and thinks he's, he's delicate and he knows that. So he used it in his matches. And I explained the seizures. I explained the the the, the arm, the, the nerve pain down the arm, whatever else. He was like, so I was like, oh, so he actually is cool with getting beat up in front of his in front of his kids. Yes, because he's a sicko. She's like, oh, she laughed. She chuckled. Mm-hmm. She chuckled. Like the dude is the dude different, man. The dude special. And um, we've always known that. But like that that part for me was like he's doing it in front of his family, firing up, and then you know. You know Page comes out, which ties up in a really nice bow without actually interfering with the, the match in a way, right? Like Swerve and, and Heyman are going to have had a lot moment. of responsibility, like and like it, it accomplished so much. It, from a storytelling perspective of the long form history of this guy Danielson, since he came into the company, may be the may have been the best wrestler to come in since day one, and he failed and failed and failed, and now he's not even fighting for the towel anymore. He's fighting for his family because. And in like he was going out soft on the way out until Swerve made the mistake of of letting his ego get in the way of of it being more than a match. Once Swerve made it more than a match, that's where he fucked up. And then it, it made Danielson hone in on something that just wasn't there, that wasn't on the table until Swerve took it there. And that's what happens to, to people that take it too far and sort of like you, you go too far. This is Hubert's catching Swerve. It all it. It, it worked so well in the match and all this stuff and hey man coming out there it, it all of this stuff it just it just fits so well in like just between you know obviously between this main event the main event of wrestlemania night two uh earlier this year is like when the biggest shows of the year give you these rewarding payoffs pro wrestling is fucking awesome and you know people kept talking about it online like wrestlemania 30 and this and it's like daniel Bro- Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson has given us two of those. You are lucky. You are lucky as a professional wrestler in your life to even give, even get to one of those. He's done it twice. Do special, do special. And um, you know, I, I, you know, I think a big part of this year for me was talking was about like, hey man, we got two relatively competent pro wrestling promotions, and one's hot as fish grease, and the other one is about to make a. A ton of money on the next TV deal, and they're going to and they're going to be the most successful number two promotion in the history of her wrestling in a country. Like so, all the stuff that I hear about people about AEW's failures or WWE's failures, for the most part, there are things to talk about it in critique or whatever else. But they're taking care of the main things right now, and so 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 you know, for even a show like us that likes to get into nitty gritty or whatever else, I just enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I, I, I was very, very, very happy. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I got a eulogy for uh, Swerve. So this is what I thought of his title reign. So um, as his gear stated, uh, Swerve Strickland was the eighth AW World Heavyweight Champion. He will remain the first black man to ever hold that distinction. And dropping the championship to Brian Danielson in Wembley Stadium at All In 2024, he comes full circle from being put in a coffin in that very arena one year prior. Holding the championship since April 21st, 2024, when he defeated Samoa Joe, Swerve became the third man since his arch rival Hangman Page to win this title without any prior runs as world champion. 
Swerve faced unique challenges that no other champion had to answer for thus far. A surgical rival, a surging rival promotion. All eyes on him to see how he rose the, to the occasion in every match, interview, and even where his segments were placed on the show. He has forever carved himself a place among African American wrestlers in the history of the sport. His title reign proved it isn't how long you hold the belt, it's about what you do with it. And what incredible things he did. TV defenses against Roderick Strong and Claudio Casagnoli, anchoring Team AEW in what seemed to be an impossible situation where he stood opposite of the elite. Incredible pay-per-view title matches against Will Ospreay, Christian Cage, and finally Brian Danielson, all while shepherding a ge generational rivalry with Hangman Page that seems set to ignite the promotion as it did in 2023. Swerve at every point showed he was ready to compete at the top level, whether it was work rate, promo ability, or star aura. This was a title reign that established him as someone that can lead a promotion. His reign ending now likely makes fans eager to see him get another run with the belt. There was a down point of his reign. It really had nothing to do with him. Constant scrutinization followed him as the phrase transitional champion got thrown his way. To his credit, he swatted those accusations anytime they seemed to bubble. Swerve should be seen as a success for black wrestling <clears throat> and credited for forcing himself into plans and higher positions at every turn since the day he walked into this promotion two and a half years ago. He rose through the tag team ranks, became an undeniable star as his association with Prince Nana flourished. His theme song became viral. A hit dance was spawned, but there was always substance to go with the incredible style. As someone that was always willing to do business, Swerve got over in front of the camera and behind the scenes proving himself over and over again. This will not be his last title reign. His new deal with AEW was signed on the pre-show before his classic match with Brian Danielson. You can be assured this will not be his only title eulogy. Whose house? Swerve Strickland's. So, um... I, I, I thought this was this this was incredible. This was special, and I will never forget this match. I'll never forget watching a friend of mine main event Wembley Stadium, talking to him minutes after the match, and I can't wait to call him this week and, and, and get and learn even more about this thing. Uh, I told him I would call him, but this is a uh, this is an achievement. And then you know you think about Brian Danielson, uh, you you talk about like how special he was. Like obviously this guy is like. This guy's great, and I hope like people that didn't like quite get it with him have have kind of got it. Whatever he, he has a filthy match catalog, and there are there are weaknesses as far as like what his character is like, and it's yeah. you know it's tough to yeah. like if, if you didn't want have ROH, if you didn't have WWE with him, maybe you might find yourself detached from this guy. However, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think there's definitely a part of it. Like, what is his character necessarily? And it's like, he's just a. I don't think he. I don't think he's necessarily selling you a character as much as he's selling you fights. Mm -hmm. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, like, and you know, I do have questions about like where the belt goes from here. We got yeah. the, the you know he's not under contract. We don't know. We don't know how none of this shit works. Quote nope. unquote. Nope. Um, they wouldn't have done this shit with MJF. I said that last week. You know, you got Christian Cage lurking around that, that has the uh, title shot, which is, you know, that's kind of – Christian has rapidly become the Nyla Rose of men, uh, it seems like. I don't know what that means. That means the first uh, challenger uh, to, to get whooped oh, by whoever the oh, champion okay. is. Okay. okay. Um, But I don't – you know – Hopefully they can figure something out. Uh, that's you know I, it, I'll cross that bridge when we get there and all that. But um, you know, Swerve and Hangman seems like it's set up on, on the uh, outside of this, and I don't know. I I feel like I'm a little bit more into that to wherever um, Danielson goes, unless they're you know they got some stuff up their sleeve. Darby's lurking around at Grand Slam. I don't know how it's all gonna gonna play out, but um. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what they do because, like, I I feel like we're I'm kind of in the dark now. Like, I I don't know what's happening. So, um, let's see what they got. Uh, Y'all got to mention Hangman sucking at an interference. Um, well, I mean, you know, I I I think 
I think, you know, you look at a lot of these main events or big matches in AEW, and we saw with Osprey and MJF, they have a lot of masters to serve. Mm-hmm. As big as it was to tell the story of Swerve tapping out to Brian Danielson in the main event, they had to set up something for for Swerve and Hangman Page, and they had to right. do it in a tasteful way, which right. didn't, that didn't just turn into oh my god, it led directly to the finish. Like it didn't, it didn't undermine like the integrity of the match, it, and it didn't, and it also like felt worthy of the occasion. Like the reaction that he got when he came out there, let me know they could have main event in that stadium too, like easily. So like like people are into this. Um, I you know, and I think that. That's going to be exciting, whatever they do with that. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, I mean, that can main event because they can always do go lights out. And, you know, like a year ago about uh, Hangman drank Swerve's blood. Who knows what they're going to do with bodily fluid next time. <laughs> <clears throat> um, But, yeah, um, anything else? Uh, oh, yeah, shout out to Na- Shout out to Nana. All these years in the business. Look, Main events, Wembley Stadium. The most efficient manager I think I've ever seen. Manager valet. Bloody Danielson is getting stomped out in in front of his family. And not a... Right in front of him. Right in front of Birdie. The greatest. The best, man. Just the fucking best. Oh, it was so good. Like, I, like it's one of the few matches where I'm like, I can't wait to rewatch that. Like, there are a few yeah, this year yeah. where it's like, I can't wait to rewatch this. And, like, I, you know, I haven't watched any of the G1 stuff, so I, I got to go watch that, right? But, like, once I get through, like, the stuff that, that, that Jeremy recommends to me or whatever else, or what Jeremy recommended on its high, high or whatever else, I'm going straight to, like, basically, as you mentioned, like, the, the uh, you know, Dang, like Danielson versus Swerve versus Osprey stuff that's happened this year, and I'll throw in Takeshi and Osprey too. Like it's, and I'll throw in the Sting retirement match. Like some of these, some of these like top AEW matches, like you know they've all they they've they've, they've had five star matches, right? They've had those before. I think I like this set this year of like top match from AEW more than like any other year except for like 2019 maybe. I don't know why. But it, they just, I don't know why, but like they just, they resonate with me in a way that like even more than like, you know, Lucha Bros, well, not the cage match. The cage match is, that's something totally different. But like the, like that ladder match that they had, uh, ladder match of death, like that's all, that's all time ladder match. I think I'll throw on, you know, one of those. And the thing that's crazy about it is like, I mentioned that in like what's your favorite Danielson like series in AEW? I mean Hangman, I would say. Doesn't that feel super underrated historically in AEW history? Is it because it's never been on pay-per-view except for one? It's never been on pay-per-view. Oh, okay, never Ever. been on pay-per-view. I, maybe <laughs> I one. Yeah, they've been on TV. Like, yo, know, those matches are so fucking good. I mean, anyway, but yeah, like I just um I I I didn't think I was going to like have a bigger appreciation for da- for for Brian Danielson or Swerve Strickland in 2024. I've been watching one since 2011. I've been watching the other since 2019. A lot. It's kind of crazy, man. That they have they have that kind of time invested in, into like two wrestlers, and then they go out there and they like you have crazy expectations for them while being constant of like. These the pressures of uh, you know, the actually you put on might be unrealistic and unhealthy, and then they still shoot past it. It's crazy. Yeah, man. Um, TNT title match.